What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, it's time. It's time to review Nebula. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I've been a little bit slack for many reasons on my Marvel Champions reviews. I'm sorry about that. But we did get the Mad Titan Shadow review done the other day, and now we get to talk about Nebula, and I am delighted. And I'll tell you what, I have played a bunch of games, and I mean a bunch of games with Nebula, and I'm still not entirely sure. I still don't quite know, because there was a point where I thought Nebula was going into my top five heroes. And then I played a bunch more games, and I'm not entirely sure. But let's be clear, the only question here is whether Nebula goes into my top five heroes. Whether Nebula is great is in no way, shape, or form even a question. Nebula is absolutely brilliant. I adore Nebula. And playing her is awkward. And I mean that in the best possible way. So Nebula is all to do with actually surprisingly cheap upgrades. So over in Alter Ego mode, you've got a recovery of 3, which is standard, hand size of 6, which is standard, and hit points of 9. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Hit points of 9 feels low. It feels really low. And sometimes, you know, a bad turn can just knock you out. If the villain gets to attack twice in a turn, and we all know there are plenty of cards that can do that, it can be the end. You have to be prepared. But every time you play a technique upgrade, you draw two cards. Now, there are eight technique upgrades in your deck. So, although you won't always have one, there will be a lot of turns when you do. So, realistically, in Alter Ego mode, you're going to have basically an eight-guard hand a lot of the time. And trust me when I say, especially with these one-cost technique upgrades, and they're all one-cost upgrades, you will play a lot of cards, more than you do with a lot of heroes. Moving over into hero mode, you've got absolutely standard stats of 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Hand size of 5 and hit points of 9. Again, the hit points feel low. But after your turn begins, you resolve the special ability on each technique upgrade you control. And then you discard each technique upgrade resolved in this way. And this is what makes Nebula so much fun to play. Essentially, at the start of your turn, you activate and lose all of your upgrades. So let's take Weapons Master. It's a one-cost upgrade. They're all one-cost upgrades. And while in hero form, Nebula gains Retaliate 1. Now, there are actually two copies here, which means you've got Retaliate 2, which is brilliant. Because you go to hero mode, you've got two of these down. The villain attacks you, and they take two damage when they attack you. That is phenomenal. Especially if you can do some blocking and all of that. But it's got a special skill that deals four damage to an enemy. So essentially, what's going to happen is you're going to have one turn in hero mode with Retaliate 2. And then at the start of your next turn, oh, it's the start of my turn, I'm in hero mode. You deal four damage to an enemy, you deal four damage to an enemy, but then you lose them. And then on the next villain phase, you don't have that Retaliate anymore. So essentially, what you've got on all of these are passive skills for hero mode. And then a really good ability... But then they go away. So if you stay in hero mode, every time you play one of these, you'll get the passive skill for that turn. And then at the start of the next turn, the skill activates. But that still gives you really good one-cost cards. Cutthroat Ambition gives all of your attacks piercing and overkill, and you remove free threat from a scheme. So you can play this. For one turn, you've got... All of your attacks doing piercing and overkill. And then at the start of your next turn, you remove free threat from a scheme, which for a one-cost card is great. Incidentally, there's two copies of that. There's then two copies of Wide Stance, which reduces damage done to you by one, which is awesome, especially with your low hit points. And it's got a special that looks at the top three cards of the encounter deck. You discard one and put the others back in any order. And I know there's all kinds of factors, but as a general rule, when you start the villain phase, you take a threat on the scheme, and then they're going to attack or scheme with a boost icon, and then they're going to deal an encounter card. So you can basically look at those top three cards and go, right, well, I don't want you at all. 
you are going to be the number of boost icons and you are going to be the encounter card so you can actually set that which is kind of sad because on the one hand wide stance is great to have two of and on the other hand that skill is generally one you only want to use one there will be those turns where you look at the top three cards and you're like oh no and that's why having a second is cool but generally that skill is good enough once and then we've got one copy of evasive maneuvering which ignores the guard keyword, which stops you attacking the villain, the patrol keyword, and the crisis icon. Basically, all the things that would stop you attacking or thwarting as normal, you get to ignore, which is brilliant. And then you can either choose to stun or confuse an enemy. And then you've got unyielding persistence, which again is a one-off, and it gives you plus one thwart and attack. And stalwart, you cannot be confused or stunned. And then as your special skill, it gives you a tough status card. So that is what makes Nebula so interesting. You can stay in Alter Ego mode with phenomenal draw power. You're going to have eight cards most turns. It's great. And really set up a whole suite of these and then go into Hero mode for one phenomenal gigantic turn. Or you can stay in Hero mode and have a bunch of really good one-cost cards on a one-turn delay. Or you can have some mix of the two and... When I started, my first couple games, I was like, mate, I'm just staying in alter ego mode and having the one big turn. This is nuts. And then I played a few games where I was like, actually, no, I'm going to be honest with you. One cost upgrades that are this good. Let's just stay in hero mode and use them all as temporary things. And actually, there is no one right answer. You flick between them and I love it. And that is what makes Nebula so interesting. There are other cards we'll get there in a minute, but this is why Nebula is so much fun. There are turns where you will literally start the turn, deal four damage to an enemy, then four damage to an enemy, then remove free threat from a scheme, then remove free threat from a scheme, then set the number of boost icons and encounter card that's going to be dealt to you, give yourself a tough status card, stun the enemy, and I have had turns where I pulled all of them off in one turn. It was redonk. And then your turn actually starts. It is so much fun. I adore playing as Nebula. Now there are a bunch of other cards we need to talk about here. Her ally is Gamora. And Gamora is great. Two thwart or attack with one consequential damage is brilliant. Free cost and free health is what we're looking for. And after you play Gamora, you get to resolve one of the special abilities on one of your technique upgrades. This can be slightly awkward because there will be turns you want to play Gamora, but you're not really getting as much as you want. You don't have the right upgrade down. That can be annoying. But generally speaking, you know, there are turns you play Gamora and do four damage to an enemy. And then you've got a pretty good stat ally out. That's kind of awesome. Nebula's ship just lets you exhaust it to generate a resource, get it down early, and again, and it's not a hero or any of that, it's just resource. So what that means is, although you're going to have kind of eight cards in your hand a lot of the time in alter ego mode, you've also got an extra resource, which is frankly ridiculous. And again, there are a lot of good one cost cards in a Nebula deck, so and there's a bunch of free cards as well. You are going to do a lot in your turns. Combat Ready lets you either shuffle up to two Technique Upgrades from your discard pile into your deck, or discard cards on the top of your deck until you discard a Technique Upgrade, put it into play, and resolve its ability. Yes, discarding cards on the top of your deck can be super awkward, because remember when you run out of your deck you get dealt an Encounter card, but you get to play one of these and immediately resolve its ability, and you know that all these abilities are good by now, and this is a zero-cost card. Also, nice little pro tip here, right? If it's getting to the point where your deck is very, very small, you can do stuff. You know, my favorite trick is waiting until I've got very few cards left in deck. Shuffling two Weapons Master back in, and then knowing that I'm going to get that eight damage really soon, it's brilliant. There's Lethal Intent. You get two copies of Combat Ready, free of Lethal Intent. And essentially, you pay as much as you like. And you get to resolve that many special abilities. Now, it is a hero action. You've got to be in hero mode. That's really important. Because remember, when you're in hero mode at the end of your turn, you're going to lose them at the start of your next turn. But if you've got those games where you've been able to play multiple of these upgrades, you can then use lethal intent to use them all. 
and then use them all again at the start of your next turn, you will have some ridiculous turns with Nebula. I, I, the more I think about it, the more I think she has made her way into my top five heroes, and I do not say that lightly. And yes, I'm now going to do a top five heroes. I'm going to do that video in the next couple of weeks. Now, that's what you get coming out of her hero deck. It is extremely strong. You come out of the box with a justice deck. We're not going to spend as much time talking about this. It's not as important because obviously with a deck building, you can do whatever you like. But seriously, the Nebula deck of cards is just brilliant. But to shout out a couple of the justice cards that I really enjoyed, Venom is great. Free attack, two thwart. You've got to take two consequential damage unless there is no threat on the main scheme, in which case you only take one. And at that point, you can attack for free damage three times and then block. I love Venom. Incidentally, if you can't play a deck where you're constantly removing all the threat, don't play Venom. It's not worth it. But the pre-built deck, I was able to get rid of all of the threat pretty regularly and Venom was awesome. One Way or Another was another card that I really appreciated because it lets you, as a zero-cost event, once per turn, or right around, you search the encounter deck for a side scheme, reveal it, and then draw three cards. You can't do it against every villain, but if there's, you know, a two-threat side scheme that's just kind of a crisis or whatever, or you can get rid of it easily, this draws you three cards. So you start in Alter Ego mode, hand size of six, play that technique upgrade, and then you draw two cards. Then you play this and draw three cards. Again, monster turns, ladies and gentlemen. Monster turns. This is one that I really enjoyed. Also, just as served, after you thwart and remove the last threat from a scheme, you discard it and ready your hero. So, bearing in mind, you know, I've already told you that we've got, like, Unyielding Persistence, which gives you plus one thwart and plus one attack. Plus, it comes with Heroic Intuition, which gives you plus one thwart. And all of a sudden, I've got four thwarts and I can do it twice per turn? Yes. Obviously, yes. That was an awful lot of fun. Now, we do need to finish talking about the Nemesis here, and it's Gamora. And the thing is, Gamora was harsh. Because like we saw with Nebula in the Gamora deck, when you enter play, you get rid of your Gamora ally. And that's actually horrible. Because Gamora's really good. And it sucks when she gets discarded. Made me really sad every time it came out. That is a huge, huge downside. You will lose your ally, and, and that's just harsh, quite frankly. It's not something I enjoyed very much at all. Again, thematically, it's wonderful, and I love the fact that it works that way in the Gamora deck and the Nebula deck, but you have been warned. And Gamora comes in here with two scheme, two attack, six health. But every time she attacks and damages you, you've got to discard an upgrade. And I know you've got loads of one-cost technique upgrades, but you never really want to lose them. You want to use them. Yeah, Gamora was one of these. I don't always take out the Nemesis minion immediately, but Gamora was one where I always felt the need to, because losing all of those upgrades was just too harsh. The side scheme then gives you minus one thwart attack and defense. And Gamora plus one attack and piercing. And it's just mean. Because again, you've got ways to give yourself tough status cards. But Gamora can just go right through them. And then you've got this horrible situation where she's got free attack, piercing, and discards an upgrade every time she damages you. Gamora can get really harsh really quickly. Remember, the side scheme comes out with Gamora. We've then got lethal weapon which gives Gamora plus one attack or the villain if Gamora's gone. And you can discard an upgrade you control to get rid of it. And then there's old rivals whereby Gamora attacks you, but if no attack was made, it gains surge. But again, if Gamora's out and at full power and she's attacking you multiple times, you're losing multiple upgrades and it's just mean, ladies and gentlemen. It's just mean. Overall, 
I loved playing as Nebula. I thought Nebula was absolutely brilliant. Nebula, not every hero. There's a lot of heroes out at the moment. Not all of them can enter the current rotation. There's just too many. I've got my favorites, like all of you do, that every time a new scenario comes out, they are the ones I want to bring out every time. Nebula has gone into that. Nebula's a five wassy deck for me. I adore door nebula and the fact of the matter is you can just do so much with a lot of the cards being cheap slash free the fact that you've got great draw power in alter ego mode and all of the tricks that you've got the fact that you can either stay in alter ego mode thwarting and incidentally justice is a really good aspect for nebula because what you often want to do is stay in alter ego mode thwarting or you know thwarting with cards and all of that so that you can build up that big board state or whether you're in hero mode and just using a bunch of one-cost cheap cards. I adore playing as Nebula. It is one of the most fun heroes out there. And I think if, if you don't buy every hero, this needs to be one of the ones on your list. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I just like the playstyle. Either way, I want to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at Lawasi. That's where we talk Marvel Champions and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.